Hello and welcome to the weekly market roundup with me, David Madden. Today's date is Tuesday the 30th of October and the time has just gone 9.30 Greenwich Mean Time. Um, starting off, um, we've had a fairly mixed session in Europe this morning. Uh, equity markets started off in reasonably okay shape on the back of a positive run in Chinese equity stock markets. But it, we, we have given up uh, a fair bit of the gains we have seen in Europe. And the FTSE is just about holding on to positive territory, uh, while the DAX and the CAC uh, are, are firmly in the red. Um, there's a couple of stories going on. Um, yesterday, we, heard, we initially heard from, from President Trump, who said he's considering uh, ratcheting up addition tariffs on China uh, should, trade not, tra should trade talks not go ahead. But then he turned around and, and seemed to be a bit more optimistic in, in, in the terms of the possibility of the trade talks actually resulting uh, in, in a deal. But also pointed out that uh, China may be aren't as optimistic as, or, as ho or as hopeful as he is. Uh, overnight, we heard from the Chinese securities regulator, and they're essentially making the process um, of investing in, Ch in Chinese stocks easier. So for share buybacks, M&A activity, and so on and so forth. Essentially, they're kind of deregulating the kind of investment market as a way of actually kind of propping up Chinese equity markets. And uh, in, in Shanghai and, and Shenzhen, we saw decent gains made uh, in both those markets. Um, and those gains initially kind of transferred over to here to Europe, but now once again, a bit of uncertainty has crept into the market, and we're seeing, uh, largely speaking, European stocks in the red. Uh, what I'll do in terms of the video this, this time around, I'll actually change the format slightly. I'll now run through some of the major markets, and then towards the end of the video, I'll then talk about the, the major events which are coming out during the week. So starting off with the FTSE 100, um, I want to talk to you about a certain key level, the 200-week moving average which is this line here. Uh, we're trading back above it now, but we have traded below it uh, only, only uh, yesterday and, and, uh, and uh, on Friday. The 200-week moving average is a, is a, could potentially be a fairly important level. And seeing as we're back above it, it would suggest that things are looking ever so slightly positive. If we can hold above it, um, we, we, we could, that could potentially be the beginning um, of the kind of at the bottom of the, of the market that we, that we have seen recently. But if we do fall below it, we could be looking heading back down towards the March lows of this area here in at 6,831. And if we go south of that, we could be looking heading back down to this area here at 6,678. I take a look now on the daily chart, talk about the potential upside move. If you can uh, push on higher from here on the FTSE 100, the next time to keep an eye for the upside would be this high here, the kind of late October high of 7,114. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking heading up towards this region here at 7,250. So we talked about the 200 week moving average on the FTSE 100. We're also going to talk about it on the on the, on the, uh, the DAX, the Jura market. As we can see here, um, this, this red line here is the 200 week moving average. And the DAX is in considerably worse shape than the FTSE 100, and it's well below um, the 200 week moving average. So it's a bit, it's a bit, um, it's, it's, it's quite worrisome that, that the DAX is below that, that metric. Um, but if the DAX can get it back above it and the FTSE can hold above, hold above its 200 week, week, week moving average, it would suggest that we could see the potential of a, of a bottom forming, or we could be looking to move on higher from these levels. But while we, we remain south on the 200 week moving average on the DAX, it's likely that the outlook is going to remain negative. So, keep taking a look here on the weekly chart. Uh, it, it's been in, in, a, in a fairly obvious downward trend uh, in, in recent months so if we do continue to push on lower from here on the on the on the, uh, on the, on the DAX rather we could be looking heading back heading down towards 11,000 any moves to the upside um, in the in, in the DAX could run into in resistance at this area here uh, in that in 11,000 it's just shy of 11,700 so if you go beyond that we could be looking at heading, heading up towards the uh, the mid August mid October high of 11,850 and if we go beyond that, we could be looking heading up towards uh, 12,000, big psychological number. Take a look now at what's going on on the, uh, on the Dow Jones. This is quite interesting because we've got possibly, we have possible some trend line support coming into play. If we draw a line between the lows of February of this year and also of April and also of May, we can see that this, this forms a trend line here. Uh, as you can see, only, only yesterday we actually traded well below the trend line but today we're back above and actually pretty much sitting on the trend line at the moment uh, so if we can hold above that trend line it's likely uh, that we could, we could see the wider upward trend in the Dow Jones continue and if we do continue 
continue to push on higher from here, we could be looking at target in the 25,000 area or this red line here, the 200 day moving average, which comes into play at 25,124. But if you fall back below the, the trend line, that will that would signal a potential that would say that would be a sign for potential further losses. And should we push on lower from there, we could be looking down towards 24,000. Take a look what's going on with the S&P 500. S&P 500 also endured fairly sizable uh, sell-offs recently, but notice how we actually managed to hold above just above this, this area here uh, at 2,600, a big psychological number, and also that 2,600 wasn't too far away from the May lows. So if we can hold above 2,600, and also keep in mind that if the, if the, if the Dow Jones manages to hold above uh, that, that trend line support, the outlook of both indices could potentially uh, be positive. If you do look to hold above uh, 2,600 on the S&P 500, we could be looking heading back up towards 2,700, but a break below this and a break below the, um, the, the May low of 2,594 would point for further losses. And if you do have a fairly sizable, um, if you do continue in the kind of recent downward trend that we've been in, we could be looking heading back down towards this area here, the lows of February, which come into play at 2,532. Take a look now at what's going on in the currency markets. So it appeared that euro dollar has fallen back into the, uh, the, the wider negative trend that started out in April. So we had a fairly, fairly, fairly obvious sell-off um, begin, beginning in April. Uh, but since, since August, we've had a bit of a correction. But ever since late September, the, the sell-off uh, appears to be kind of appears to be kind of taking hold yet again. If we do continue to push on lower on euro dollar, we could be looking back down towards the 113 area. Uh, any moves to the upside may run into resistance in the kind of 115, 115, 10 region. Notice how 115, 115, 10 did act as a fairly decent level of support over the last number of months. So the possibility that could become new resistance. And if you have a decent break north of the uh, 115, 115, 10 area, we could be looking at retesting the um, the 100 day moving average, this yellow line here, which comes into play at uh, just north of 116. Apologies. Uh, Taking a look now at pound dollar. Similar situation whereby the pound versus the, the dollar lost a lot of ground uh, between August and April. Uh, and for a while there, between, April, between mid, mid August and late September, it was shown signs of a very decent uh, bounce back, but it would appear that we were falling, we were moving lower yet again. Notice how the highs of October failed to take off the highs of September, and of course the lows of October have taken off the lows of early, of early, of early uh, October. And we're, we could, we're actually even back below the lows of, uh, of early September. So if you continue, if you continue to kind of push lower here, we could be looking heading back down towards the August lows. This price here at one spot 26.61. Any moves back, uh, any kind of bounce backs uh, in, in pound, uh, in pound dollar, could run into resistance at this area here at one spot twenty-eight ninety-five, and beyond that, we could run, resistance may come into play at one spot thirty. Take a look at what's going on in the gold market. It's called that a major sell-off between uh, once again, but similar to the party dollar-driven, a fairly sizable sell-off between between um, April and August, but. To be fair to gold, it has been pushing higher in, in recent uh, in recent weeks, and only actually uh, only on, on Friday that actually hit a level not seen since actually early July. Uh, and while we, we remain north of this area here at 114.10, it's possible we, we could see gold uh, continue in, in the kind of in the kind of um, in, in, the, in the positive move that we've been seeing since uh, mid August. Uh, any moves to continue moves to the upside in gold. May run into resistance in at this, uh, up towards 12.50 or this price here in at uh, 12.65. Any moves to the downside could find some support in at, at 12.14. And if we go south at 12.14, we could be looking heading back down towards the 1200 mark. Take a look now what's going on in w uh, the, the oil market. Brent crude oil to begin with. So Brent crude oil obviously had a fairly sizable sell off uh, as, as a WTI. TI since mid since mid um sorry since early since early um oct October so in, in that, essentially the beginning of the beginning of this month it's had a fairly sizable sell off negative momentum is quite strong but we are seeing some signs 
of the market pushing higher and we are seeing some signs that negative momentum is cooling so if you can hold above this area here at 75 and it's a possibility that we, we could look to actually um, um, pull back some of the losses that, that, that the oil market has incurred so we could look at heading back up towards the 80 direction if you can hold up if you can hold above if you can hold above the recent lows at 75.17, the possibility could be heading back up towards uh, the $80 a barrel region. But if the market does turn over on itself again and take out 75, keep an eye off of this, this red line here, the 200-day moving average at, at, at $74. Notice how the market traded just ever so slightly below the 200-day moving average back in mid-August. So it has previous history, recent history of acting as support, so it could act as potentially new support uh, should the market turn lower yet again. Turning attention now to WTI, similar uh, shape to the chart provides a fairly aggressive sell-off since early October, and this occasion actually WTI is in worse shape because it's actually uh, traded well below the 200-day moving average. At this red line here, which comes into play at 76 spot six, sorry, 67 spot 68 this, this red line here, but we are seeing signs that the market trying to kind of get um, get back above it. But for the time being, it is acting at resistance. And, if it, and if, while we remain south of it, it's likely that the that the, uh, the negative move is going to continue. So if the market does turn over on itself yet again and uh, take off the recent lows here, we could be really heading back down towards 65. And we could be heading, like, heading back down towards this this um, the mid-August low uh, of 64, spot 66. Once again, notice how the trending moving average did manage to act as support for WTI, and if it's acted as, as, as a support in the past, it could act as support again in the future. And if you do take out uh, that the, the mid-August low, we could be looking back down toward the kind of mid-June low of 63 spot 58. It's only if you actually could take, retake uh, this yellow line here, the one of the moving average at 69 spot 95, heading towards the kind of 70 mark, because then we become more confident that, uh, that WTI is going to push on higher. And if you do have a size of break north of the of the of the as they call it the seventy dollar mark, we could be looking heading towards the kind of seventy two fifty region. Take a look now uh, at some of the uh, at the, uh, the week ahead uh, and, uh, and discuss some of the major update corporate and economic updates for the rest of the trading week. Uh, the week ahead article can be, can be found on our website. If you go to cmcmarkets.com under news and analysis, you will find the week ahead article. Uh, and obviously today is Tuesday, Tuesday, so a couple of events have already taken place. So later tonight, we have uh, third quarter figures from Facebook. Uh, we also have an Apple event uh, tonight. Uh, the, on Wednesday, we have the Bank of Japan interest rate decision. Uh, we have a raft of global uh, manufacturing PMIs coming out on Wednesday also. On Thursday, we have the Bank of England rate decision, and on Friday, we have U.S. non-farm payrolls. Um, that is that is going to be the most important economic indicator of the week, uh, possibly even of the month as well. And we're actually holding is a webinar, uh, which you which you are welcome to join and sign up for. Um, the webinar can be found if you go to our website, cmcmarkets.com, under Learn, uh, and then go Webinars and Events. You can see here that you can, you can sign up for free uh, for a webinar. Non-farm payrolls live coverage um, at three, sorry, um, 1315 Greenwich Mean Time uh, on Friday, the 2nd of November. Uh, if you have any kind of comments on this video or any of the other videos uh, that we've made here at CMC Markets, please feel free to leave a review on Google Reviews. And that's all for me this week. Thank you very much.